For an instant, my heart stood still, and I would have screamed out, only that I was paralyzed. In the pause that he spoke, in a sort of keen, cutting whisper, pointing as he spoke to Jonathan. Silence! If you make a sound, I shall take him and dash his brains out before your very eyes. I was appalled and was too bewildered to do or say anything. With a mocking smile, he placed one hand upon my shoulder and holding me tight, bared my throat with the other. First, a little <sighs> refreshment to reward my exertions. You may as well be quiet. It is not the first time or the second that your veins have appeased my thirst. I was bewildered, and strangely enough, I did not want to hinder him. I suppose it is a part of the horrible curse that such is when his touch is on his victim. No, my God, my God, pity me. He placed his reeking lips upon my throat. I felt my strength fading away, and I was in a half swoon. How long this horrible thing lasted, I know not. But it seemed that a long time must have passed before he took his foul, awful, sneering mouth away. I saw it drip with the fresh blood. The remembrance seemed for a while to overpower her, and she drooped and would have sunk down but for her husband's sustaining arm. With a great effort, she recovered herself and went on. Then he spoke to me, mockingly. And so you, like the others, would play your brains against mine. You would help these men to hunt me and frustrate me in my designs. You know now, and they know in part already, and will know in full before long, what it is to cross my path. They should have kept their energies so you was closer to home. Whilst they played wits against me, against me!